Tom Curran's Patriots Talk Podcast is presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Tom Curran's Patriots Talk Podcast featuring Phil Perry, especially this week featuring Josh Uche. Third-year Patriots player entering his fourth year, had a dynamic 2022 season. I said, Josh Uche, you want to jump on a Zoom and do the Patriots Talk podcast at Quick Slants? He goes, I'll come into the studio. <laughs> so we checked a couple boxes, and here he is, ready to talk ball. How you doing, bud? Doing good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being with us, man. We are very happy to have you. Now, how's the offseason been so far? What do you spend your time with, like, from January 9th mm. to the first week of April? It's all about getting ready for the upcoming season. I mean, um, it's called the off season, but it's never really off, right? Um, just taking care of your body and then factoring your family and your friends into your schedule at that point because you're not coming into the building anymore or anything like that. So working out, nutrition, family time, and um, yeah, just relaxing a little bit, decompressing. Have you had a focus, a, a priority this off season for, for you and your game as you go into 2023 here? We saw this massive production <laughs> explosion yeah. last year from you, but you go into the offseason now with all this time, what's your focus? My focus is just being the best player I could be each day and just getting better each day, finding something to improve on, whether it be, you know, um, pass rushing, tackling, coverage, setting the edge, whatever it is, just, you know, finding my weaknesses and just, you know, pinpointing it and improving. Is it that simple that 2022 mainly consisted of the opportunity more than anything else? There was no magic... Well, you don't want to say magic pill from the NFL, <laughs> but there was no magic formula yeah. that allowed you to go from a guy who had had some injuries, was kind of buried on the depth chart, got mm -hmm. his chance, and then exploded with an 11 and a half sack season. Was there any one thing that was different, or was it simply opportunity? It was just being a professional, you know, I'm taking care of my body, eating right. So you were in better shape? Better shape. Really? I'd say getting adjusted to the league and, you know, figuring out what worked for my body, what didn't work for my body, what I was more receptive to. And then putting that into my routine, being disciplined and just, you know, having all that stuff come together, being out there for practice, being available and just building that camaraderie with my teammates. And, you know, Phil has done a great job in the past talking to Ted. What's Ted's last name? Ted Harper. Ted Harper. Yeah. yeah. Did you get close with Ted Harper, who's the nutritionist? And Phil can explain it better. I'm going to let you ask the question. Yeah, well, he's the he's the nutritionist dietitian for you guys with the Patriots has been for a long time now. Mm -hmm. How closely have you had to work with him to with him to get everything sort of dialed in for you because I know that's been big for him over the years is you don't just have one nutrition plan for the entire team everything mm -hmm. has to be catered to each individual did it take you some time to kind of really pinpoint things there definitely I mean Ted does a great job going around to guys and figuring out their specific needs so you know one example of Ted you know um, making things unique to my situation is, you know, I'd have like protein shakes and different things I would eat before and after practice mm -hmm. to sustain what I was doing out there, or all the calories I was losing. And, um, you know, just different, different little tricks he does and, and different, you know, uh, relationships he has with guys. He knows like if a guy is slacking off or doing X, Y, Z, just by their personality or whatever. And he'll just make sure to follow up. And, you know, he just wants to see guys do the best they can and be the best players they can be in. You know, Ted's done a great job just, you know, staying on top of me and my diet, so. Do you look at 2023, you know it, I know it, Phil knows it, everybody who pays attention, the Patriots knows it, it's a contract season. Yeah. And in a contract season, a guy can go from, if you're a second round pick, mm -hmm. um, from making a fair amount of money to the general populace, a great amount of money, mm -hmm. to astronomical amounts of money. If that season goes the way it could and you play a position like you do, you play in the edge. Is it difficult at all to divorce yourself from that mental conversation? Holy crap, if I have a good year this year. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be there a tiny bit. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, being in college, going to Michigan, um, I was put in a similar situation, right? You have four years to try to fulfill your dreams. And that pressure got, kind of gets put on, onto you as you know approach your senior year. And I learned if you treat every year of your career like a contract year, you don't have to really you know, you don't have that stress or that mm -hmm. frustration because you're taking everything seriously from practice to your sleep to your diet. The rest will handle itself, but if you control the controllables and take everything serious, treat everything like a contract year, then, you know, the chips will fall where they may, so. 
All right, so got to take you behind the curtain here a little bit. Tom had a great idea for a conversation for us the other day on the podcast. He said, look at all these guys that are entering into their contract years. That 2020 draft class, you guys had some talented pieces there. Kyle Duggar, yourself, Mike Owenu. Yeah. And we started talking about, okay, who would you make the priority mm. in terms of making sure that that guy is back and back for the long term? Mm -hmm. I said, you know, Josh Uche, double digit sacks, plays a premium position. That's where I would go first. My question to you is, have the Patriots prioritized things with you as far as your contract situation goes? Have they come to you yet and had any discussions about trying to lock you up long term? I kind of just let my agency handle those things. I mean, um, very diplomatic. I mean, it's the truth. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I think uh, I put all my focus into my craft and that's the best I can do. That's my job. And it's all about doing your job at the end of the day. And I kind of let my agents handle that, and they, you know, they could sort through all that stuff. I'm just, I'm here to play ball. Like, I'm here to work, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I'm going to make sure this opportunity, I give it everything I got. What's the tenor around this 2023 Patriots team on the brink of starting OTAs? After what I would imagine, you look at it and say, that's, that's, not, that's not who we were. We're a better team than we put out there. Mm -hmm. The tenor right now is just, you know, improving every day, man. And then building that sweat equity you know, working together and just, you know, figuring out who we are, what our identity is this year. You know, each year is different. There's a new slate. You know, uh, nobody cares what you did last year. It's all about this new year and uh, figuring out our identity for that and just working hard every day, building towards that. Do you think you can get a feel for that during the off-season portion of the, the program here? You guys are about to next week start mm -hmm. the, the optional portion of the off-season workouts. Mm -hmm. Do you look at those as an opportunity to really determine mm -hmm. what your identity is or it's still so early that that's a feeling out process that everybody has to go through? It's, it's very early on, man. I mean, it's like, we're so excited. I'm very excited for football to be back. And it's like, you want to make those predictions. You want to predict the future. But the truth is, it's just each day, if you're present in each day, like the future will handle itself. You know, you're working today for tomorrow, if that makes sense. And the harder we work each day, you know, the better chances, the better our odds are in the future to be where we want to be. What have you been reading? You've been reading something. <laughs> You've been reading something to keep you in the moment. Yeah. Uh, Go on. <laughs> definitely, definitely been reading uh, The Alchemist. You know, that was one book I read yeah. in the season last year, and it, uh, you know, one of my favorite books, and it, it just gave me a new perspective on, you know, certain situations, and I think, uh, you know, yeah, that's kind of, that's been my favorite book, my go-to. Two Mayo recommendations that he gave me when he used to come in. Mm -hmm. One, the subtle art of not giving a, get ready for the beep, <laughs> and two, um, Untethered Soul. Mm. Those are two amazing books because they just, you know, really center on, okay, what, what matters? What are you going to deal with that, mm. that, that matters? How much luggage are you going to carry around with you mm. on the day to day? Bringing it back to football. Mm. By the time 2022 ended, mm. baggage claim was loaded with luggage from the Patriots 2022 season. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, it wasn't what I've seen as a situationally smart team. The penalties that you saw on both sides, it wasn't as disciplined, and it had a disappointing end. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that that baggage and luggage remains unclaimed and you move forward without it? I mean, Coach Mayo always said, he always talked about how Junior Sale used to say, next play. You know, if you're worrying about that play that happened before or the season before or whatever before, you're going to trip up and miss your opportunity ahead of you. So kind of just taking that mentality of next play and just worrying about the next season, the next day, and just like doing everything you can in that moment to make the next day or next play a good one. Is it ever hard to focus on the next play, the next day, whatever it is? Yeah. Because the discussions, mm -hmm. whether it's us in the media, I think fans are a part of this as well. Everybody's on social media these days, so I don't know how much of this stuff you see, mm -hmm. but we're still looking back at 2022, mm -hmm. right? Just last week, uh, Pro Football Talk, which is part of the NBC family here, reports that, you know, Bill Belichick is discussing Mac Jones and potential trades with other teams. Mm. How do you feel about those kinds of things still lingering from last season? And tell us specifically how you feel about Mac. Okay. Um, at, at the end of the day, I mean, it's up to Coach Belichick to, to make the best decision for the teams. You know, my job is to be a player, to go out there and do my job. Um, so leaving the coaching decisions up to them, that's kind of what's, you know, helped me focus more. And when it comes to Mac, you know, I love Mac. I mean, he's a competitor. I mean, somebody who I've gone to war with and, you know, practice with, and I've seen his work ethic and his tenacity. And, you know, I think he's a dog. You know, that's me personally, you know, having worked with Mac, you know, and knowing what I know about him. And listen, he's a dog. That's all I can say, man. I mean, he's our quarterback. Like, he's, 
you know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm with, you know. So you, so. I mean, here's, I keep saying, look, he's got an offensive coordinator who's been a head coach in the league who's had success here in New England. He's got a complement of receivers around who are pretty friggin' good. Mm -hmm. He's going to have an offensive line that's more stable, perhaps, than it was last year at times. All those things together are going to give him a chance to hit the ground running. I think he's going to have a really good friggin' year. Are you curious from a peer-to-peer, -peer, colleague, and maybe friend's standpoint of saying, I hope he kicks ass this year. You always hope. I mean, it's going to help you if he does. Yeah, of course. And you always wish success on your, you know, your friends, your teammates, your brother. You always want to see them be successful. And um, at the end of the day, we're, it's a collective effort. You know, if everyone does their job to the best of their, their ability, then we'll get to where we want to be. And so we just have to trust everyone's working and putting everything they can towards that goal. You know, Mayo being Mayo, I could one million percent, if he was still in that locker room, he would see Matt coming and go, oh, I thought you were trading. <laughs> I thought you got trade. You're still here? No. <laughs> that, that sounds you, like... You guys have to have a sense of humor about to. this stuff. You got to laugh to keep from crying. Who does that? <laughs> Dietrich Wise? Is he... Or Judon? Or you? Who's responsible for keeping him light? Man, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a collective effort. Again, <laughs> Judon definitely is like, he's at the forefront there. Then you've got D-Wise, Jalen Mills is always putting his input in. Jabril, then who else we got? You know, Barmore is definitely always up there. And it makes co coming into work fun, man. I mean, you know, you just gotta, you gotta be able to laugh and have some fun sometimes. Tom, just mentioned, you know, he, he, Mac Jones is a peer of yours. Mm -hmm. You're part of what is looking like a, a talented and up and coming sort of young core that this team's been able to develop over the course of the last three years. How do you view yourself fitting into a leadership role with this team as you do advance in your career and as you do establish yourself as, as one of the team's more productive guys? Do you embrace that potential role moving forward? And would that make you want to be a part of this team? We talked about how you're going into a contract here, but does that the leadership aspect of it, make you want to be a part of this team maybe moving forward long haul? I mean, definitely. Um, just to, to have a role in such a prominent organization, so much success has come through the Patriots, and to say you had a part in you know, winning and you know, helping mold the next generation as well, um, it's, it's big. And you know, when it comes to leading, I, I kind of try to lead more by example. You know, words can only do so much, but if I could show you something like then you know people might follow and try to do the same so I'm trying to lead by you know actions and you're not so much so worried sometimes you're from miami did you go to one of those high schools with like a long football tradition of like you know success yes okay yes sir. then you went to michigan which is a college with a long football tradition of success yeah now you're here in new england which hasn't had as long but has had an unprecedented run of success for a damn long time mm -hmm though it's not 50 years or however many at Michigan. Mm -hmm. How much of the onus do you feel to make sure that this team's mediocrity, which is uncommon, mm -hmm. doesn't last? That it gets back to the way it was when Mayo was here, when Vrabel was here, when Brewski was here, when all those guys who played on the edge did the jobs that you do. I mean, is that ever a, hey, we gotta get it back to where it was? I mean, definitely. I mean, those guys paved the way. And then having Mayo in there every day and you know, knowing the legacy he left behind is, you know, you feel a sense of responsibility to uphold that, you know, what they kind of paved the way and created. And um, that's why, you know, you got to go out there and take everything seriously and, you know, understand it's, it's you're playing for more than just you. You're playing for the guys that put on that jersey and that helmet before you. So one of the guys who's sort of part of a previous iteration of Patriots mm -hmm. dynastic football here was Dev McCourty, your yeah. teammate for, D for the last few years. Mm -hmm. He's obviously retired now. How do you try to replace what he gave to your team in the locker room, but also on the field? I mean, I just saw D-Mag yesterday when I was, <laughs> I was like, you know, he's, he's always a phone call away and he's just going to, I already know he's going to be involved. He's that much of a leader, man. I mean, just from being, you know, overall man, like, you know, he's, he showed me what it is to be a man to grow up and mature. So it's deeper than football when it comes to D-Mac. And um, he's just always going to be around the facility, always going to be there coaching up the young guys because that's just who he is. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he somehow jumped back into coaching. I wouldn't See? be shocked, you know. So. You want to break See? some news here? Is he going to No, 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 no. I ain't breaking no news. I just think that much, you know, he's done so much for me I can't even put into words. I would love for him to still be a part of what we're trying to accomplish. So. I tell you, it's funny because Bill will. Bill, Bill straight stole mail back off the quick slant set. Listen, straight we're sort of a feeder off. system here. <laughs> Troy Brown, Ooh. Gerard Mayo, all these guys. Never took tie. Mm. 
They've um, all been here, and now they're on the yeah, staff. Maybe Van Noy will be back, too. Um, speaking of Bill, what is... What has your relationship been like with him? I mean, people think, ah, oh, Bill, he's a little softer now than he was. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. What has your, your relationship been like with him? Describe when someone walks up to you and there's not a camera on and says, what's a Belichick like? Mm. What do you say? It's been an honor. I mean, and he's a lot funnier than people even, <laughs> you know, give him credit for. I, the team meetings I look forward to because it's always, it's, I, I find joy in it. There's jokes and different things, but that's maybe for the guys to just kind of, you know, appreciate, but it's an honor, man, to be able to learn from the greatest coach to ever coach this game. And, you know, being able to play the game and see it through his lens and in that system that's so intricate and so dynamic. And it's an honor to just be, have that wisdom or, or come through this, uh, this system and kind of just absorb this knowledge and see the game from a different lens that I didn't see it before uh, coming out of Michigan. So it's been, it's been a great, you know, it's going to be even more of a, a better experience, but so far it's been a blessing. Why were you so good last year? I mean, why'd you get to the quarterback so often? We would sit there during mini camp and go, holy crap, Uche is just living in the backfield. Did they tell him he can go 100% and everyone else is going 70? Why is he constantly breathing on Cam or, or Mac Jones? Why is he back there all the time? And then the season would start, would strike me dead, and poor Josh would not be on the field enough or would be dealing with something. So I'm like, is it going to happen for him? And then last year it happened. What led to, and I did ask this a little bit earlier, but what physical aspects, what moves, what things did you learn that you employed that worked? Or did you just help me? Help me, to, help, me help them understand you. Um, again, it comes back to just being available and being at practice, working those moves and the timing and the execution of everything. And, just being able to go out there and do what you love every day, you find the joy in the difficult times, in the training, in the sweating, in the everything. And once you find that joy, that's what carries you out into the game, and now you're just out there having fun. Can you kick over your head? Can I kick over my head? I, I don't think you so. You seem like a very flexible guy. What does that mean? I look at that <laughs> bend. Your head. Oh, you're talking like a, like yeah. a high leg kick. Yeah, yeah I look like at a... the bend of the guy. I mean, when you get around the corner, you're, you know, it's like, <laughs> you get very low, the shoulder down to the ground. I think that's a test they actually hold at the combine, right? They just see if you can just kick your foot way over your head like that. I, they, I don't know if I did that no. one. I'm a, I'm a, no, they do the sit and reach, though. They actually oh, do, do they, that. They definitely do the The sit. flexibility thing is a real it's, thing. It's you know how flexible I am? I don't know. I no. flexible. I'm more flexible than you. I guarantee it. <laughs> oh. Get up on the table. Show us. All right, yeah, let's see. Uh-oh. Boom. Look at that. My well, it's, 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 it helps when your legs are, are 24 inches long. That's just, <laughs> just going to say that. Maybe if you weren't <laughs> built like a friggin' scarecrow. Listen, <laughs> I think the question that we need to get to right now is what's been your favorite place in Massachusetts to visit? My favorite place? Aside from Newburyport. Mm, I would say I go to Aria Chatoria a lot. So, you know, the north end, I'd say. Did you see that? He's not, he's not a dummy. Hey, that guy mentioned our restaurant on... Uh, it's the truth. That's pick where up we're a, at. Might pick up a meal or two. Yep. Nah, Based that's, on a quick mention. So North End is good. Yeah, that's my, that's my go-to. Um, I remember when I first got here, uh, Coach Steve took me to Lookout Farm. That's kind of one, one of my go-tos. I don't know the specific cities it's in, but that area is just all back roads. It's a peaceful drive, and the restaurant's on a farm, and it's... I don't know. That's one of my go-to spots. So those nice. two. So. Coach Steve, that's Steve Belichick? Yeah. You trust his... Uh, Yes. His culinary recommendations? That's my guy. Um, somebody whose recommendations you've trusted for your, for your job on the field outside of what Steve might be uh, I already about. got into the grab ass. Now we're going back to the football. Well, Vaughn Miller was somebody that you <laughs> talked about last year. Yeah. And, and I don't know how much uh, of what you learned from him mm-hmm. ended up being things that we saw on the field that led to the year that you had. But this offseason, you're working with him again. I know he's, he's in the division still mm-hmm. coming off an injury. But... Did you work with him again? If not him, or if there are others, name drop for us, Josh. That's what I'm looking name for. Drop, I, want, I, want a few, I want a few names. I want to know who you've been working out with, who you've been trying to learn from. I know you guys talk. You yeah. players, you talk, and you try to learn things from each other. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vaughn's having his uh, pass for Summit again this year. You know, God willing, I'll be out there. Um, so far, i kind of been at my high school in Miami, training with my high school coach, but I, I'm doing a little something this weekend where I got a couple guys around the league flying in, and we're going to do a little pass rush, a little... 
you know, camaraderie thing, you know, chop it up, exchange some notes and stuff and see what we could, you know, implement to each other's, you know, arsenal. And what works for another guy might work for me. So that's why it's important to build relationships and, and networks out, you know, outside the field. So a Josh Uche pass rush summit? Uh, something like that, you know, a little get together with my bros. That Can we come? Rush. Definitely, pull up. That'd so be great. On, yeah, Done. this weekend. Done see, there. see you guys in Miami? Yeah, I'll, give, I'll show you guys the hump. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you look around this division, Aaron Rodgers is going to join the division. You already yeah. see a Miami team that's loaded with Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. All these. They added an unbelievable defensive coach in Vic Fangio. Mm -hmm. yeah. How daunting do you see the rest of the division becoming? Daunting. You've got to love some competition, bro. I mean, what is, what is the game with no competition like? You know, it just makes you up your game that much more. And that's all you can ask for as an athlete is, is a challenge. And attack at full speed with everything you've got, so. Does a move like that one put pressure on you guys? I mean, I think it's all about what we do. We can't, you know, it's not about what anyone else does, it's what we do each day, you know, handling what we have to handle. And it's, it all comes down to us. Good deal. I would be remiss, and my wife would be pissed, mm. <clears throat> if I didn't mention. Can't have that. Can't have that. What a tremendous job you did in the Read Across America mm. reading that you did for the Walpole Public Schools. She said, you better tell Josh what a fantastic job he did. What was the book again? The book was my superpower, yes. It talks about your you know, bullying and how certain insecurities that someone may try to project onto, you need to take that and accept it and make it your superpower and build in confidence you know, in a children's book, pretty much. So maybe if Phil makes fun of how short my legs are or my bald spot, which has been reformed by Dr. Robert Leonard, <laughs> or the size of my nose, those are all things that are reflective of his insecurities. Might be, and you just take that and make it a positive and you know, take any type of you know, uh, insecurity or tra you know, whatever someone might yeah. try to put onto mm. you and mm. flip it for the better and you know. Anything I can do to help you with some of the things that are bothering <laughs> you, you let me know. I'm just yeah. trying to bring things out into the open so that we can all make each other feel, about, feel great about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if we acknowledge our, some of our deficiencies, you know, we can get over them right. and move forward move together. Forward. No get Communication is yeah, key, man. Yeah, it's about being 100%. honest. Yeah. It's about being 100%. honest. Yeah. So I didn't say 24-inch legs are a bad thing. Nobody said it. It is what it is. put them out there. Right. It's your job to take and make it a positive. All right. Maybe yeah. we should set the edge a little bit better this year. Ooh, definitely. All right. That's going <laughs> to wrap it for Tom Curran's Patriots Talk podcast. We couldn't have been happier uh, about having Josh Uche here. Listen, good luck next week. Thank you. Starts up, right? Yes, sir. You expect a full attendance? Yes. Oh, we're expecting everyone to be there and sit. Whoever's there putting in the work. It's what it is. It's all about working, man. And we'll see him at the summit. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll bring, I'll bring the snacks. Bye, everybody.